Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Louise Minchin and Dan Walker. Our headlines for you at six o'clock. No. Hello, very good morning to you. It's a Tuesday, the 9th of June. Our main story, the plan for all primary pupils in England to go back to school before the end of term is to be dropped by the government. It means abandoning proposals for pupils from every year group to spend four weeks in school before the summer break. The Education Secretary, Gavin Williamson, is expected to confirm that decision to MPs later on today. Here's our education correspondent, Sean Coughlin, with more details. Air Minister uh, at 7.30 this morning. Let's uh, tell you about other news as well. A uh, private funeral service for George Floyd will take place in his home city of Houston later. Thousands of people have been paying their last respects to Mr Floyd at a memorial service. Our correspondent Jane O'Brien has been following events. Lawyers for Prince Andrew have rejected claims by US prosecutors that he has uh, not cooperated with the inquiry into sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. In a statement, they said the prince has offered help on at least three occasions, but the US authorities have challenged him to prove his offer to be interviewed as a witness is serious. Sean Dilley has more. Just coming up to a quarter past six, uh, you're watching Breakfast. Now, let's bring you more on today's funeral, which is going to be held in Texas for George Floyd. Jonathan Veal is a friend of Mr Floyd and he... Travel words there from mm. his friend. Um, it's 20 past six. We'll have a quick look at the front pages this morning. And the Daily Telegraph is... Uh, from medical staff to cleaners and porters, behind every survivor of coronavirus is a team of people who help them back to full health. Breakfast Graham Satchel has the story of one mum who says she owes everything to those who cared for her. That, that's, she's, that's just one story. Yeah. I mean, the incredible work that the NHS is doing and that everybody involved is emotionally involved as well. It's just an incredible thing to that see. It shows you the full team effort as well. And thank you to Karen, her family and everyone else who's taken part in that to show you what it takes to, to get somebody back. Um, Today, I'm cheating here because I'm looking at what Carol says on her forecast. <laughs> Looks like it might be brighter, Carol. <laughs> it's a nice bright start, Lou. I knew it would be spectacular, but that is just incredible and also very difficult um, to take a picture. That's the Death Star. That's no moon, to quote Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's great. But what? It's a beauty, isn't it? Uh, good morning. You're watching breakfast from the BBC with Louise and Dan. I will bring you all the latest news and sport in a moment, but just let's tell you what's on. The let's tell you um, about the main stories from BBC News as well. Our plans to get all primary school children in England back into the classroom before the end of the summer term could be abandoned the government and we'll be talking about that actually in about 10 minutes or so as well yeah now it's time for our regular chat with the gp as we do on bbc breakfast at uh, every morning just after 6 30 one way systems at work we've got one here uh, at the bbc and uh, louise and i got stuck in the building so we couldn't get out could we no <laughs> We couldn't. The lifts only go up. You can't go down in the lifts. You have to take the stairs. I think the less said about it, the better. Yeah. But there's a lot of stickers around. <laughs> yeah. But we know. We know. We don't need stickers to know where we need to sit, do we, Yes, Dan? I think we all have to walk off in a certain direction. <laughs> but yes, you, you're over there. I'm over here. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I also want to talk to you, everybody, actually, just get your views, actually, about this plan for primary school um, children in England um, to go back before the end of term or the end of the summer term and being dropped. What's your view on that? You probably, some of you, getting ready for school, um, others not. But just let us know, because we're going to speak to a head teacher about that, also the Ch Children's Commissioner, a little bit later. OK, got lots of comments about that for you. And if you do follow the one-way system in our building here, you can't take the lift two floors down to find Sally, but you can... Uh, the roses to Absolutely. support them in sports. There's a lot of a lot of um, talk about that yesterday. And like you say, it's the same with Andy Murray with tennis. It does make a difference, doesn't it? And that sort of support from the men's game for the women's game can hopefully make a big difference. That's right. And the roses are donating. I think it's around thirty-five thousand um, pounds. Uh, U.S. prosecutors have accused Prince Andrew of trying to falsely portray himself as willing to cooperate with their investigation into the convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. But legal representatives for the Duke say he has offered to speak to, with them as a witness on at least three occasions this year. We're joined now from Los Angeles. I mean, the lawyers have made this clear statement yesterday, Prince Andrew's lawyers at least, saying that he has offered to help. But you can see there is some, some disagreement about what's going on. Nick which will also be able to offer us a little bit more analysis of all of that. Yeah, it's coming up a little bit later for you. And thank you for your comments about um, the change of plan with primary schools. We'll try and get through some of those a bit later on in the programme as well, read some of those out. And we'll be speaking uh, to the Care Minister, Helen Waitley, about that and other issues at 7.30 this morning. Um, 6.51. Millions of people have been forced to borrow more during the past few months, storing up possible debt problems for the future. This is according to a leading charity. Uh, this is one of the issues that Sean is looking at. 
It's a perilous situation for, for many people, Sean. Sure. Do we know at all when sort of support runs out as well? I would promise you about some of those um, comments which you've been sending in. Have you got them? About the primary school plans. I have. I've printed okay. them off a copy. Would thank you, like, you, thank you, like? you so much. There you go. Have a look at those. Um, got, so they're hot off the press, these. Uh, Margaret says, what is going to happen about GCSEs this year? The children have missed out on so much face-to-face -face teaching. Sharon says, why can't children go back to school at the beginning of August? They've already had their summer break. This will allow them to catch up on their school curriculum um, of course in in, um, in Scotland they are due to yeah. go back in August anyway I think it's the 11th of August and um, right, yeah. Kirsty says I think this is a sensible thing to do it's tough all of this mentally and emotionally um, give our time to heal um, Zoe uh, makes an interesting point she said lack of information for parents who are shielding I don't see the point of going back just for a few weeks at restart the new year in September Atea says my son really needs to go back to school he doesn't understand the maths videos his teacher would normally go over things with him ten times um, and Alan says anyone on furlough refusing to send their children to school or return to work should have their furlough stopped immediately, says Alan. Uh, why should the taxpayers keep funding them for getting uh, used to not working and happy with their 80% of salary? Um, thank you very much for those. We'll be speaking to head teacher later, the Children's Commission uh, um, and a government representative as well. Um, Carol's got beautiful... Are they, is it, are they poppies? I think they are. Morning. I think they are, Lou. Good morning and welcome to Breakfast This Morning with Louise Minchin and Dan Walker. Our headlines for you are morning to you, uh, Tuesday the 9th of June. The plan for all primary pupils in England to go back to school before the end of term is to be dropped by the government. It means abandoning proposals for pupils from every year group to spend four weeks in school before the summer break. The Education Secretary, Gavin Williamson, is expected to confirm that decision to MPs later today. Our education correspondent, Sean Coughlin, has the details. In the United States, a private funeral service for George Floyd will take place in his home city of Houston later today. Thousands of people have been paying their last respects to Mr Floyd at a memorial service. Our correspondent Jane O'Brien has been following events. Lawyers for Prince Andrew have rejected claims by US prosecutors that he has not cooperated with the inquiry into sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. In a statement, they said the prince has offered help on at least three occasions, but the US authorities have challenged him to prove his offer to be interviewed as a witness is serious. Sean Dilley has more on that. German authorities have appealed for more information as they continue their investigation. A murder investigation has been launched after two sisters were found dead in a park in London. Uh, Britain is about to pass a significant landmark in energy production tonight. It will be two full months without burning coal to generate power. Breakfast. Um, let's get a little bit of a discussion on our main story here this morning. And the question of when it's safe to reopen schools has been one of the most debated issues mm. the government has faced during the coronavirus pandemic. Worries about safety in classrooms and concerns over the long-term impact on education of children has been raised. Let's speak now to the Children's Minister, Anne Longfield, and head teacher Mark Currell. Uh, thank you very much. The difference uh, between uh, education being a devolved um, matter. Schools in Wales will reopen from the 29th of June to all age groups for limited uh, periods during the week. Scottish schools, as Louise said earlier, they're aiming to reopen at the start of the autumn term, which is the August the 11th. And some Northern Irish pupils will be go back in late August and then there'll be a phased return. The plan is anyway for the rest of those pupils in September. Uh, thank you very much for all your comments as well. Taya, my son really needs to go back to school. He doesn't understand the maths videos. His teacher would normally go over things ten times and that's the thought I'm sure echoed by lots mm. of people as well. Uh, right, um, so many different points of view on that. Get in touch with us and we'll be speaking to um, Helen Waitley from the government about that, other things as well, shortly. Yes, uh, lots to pack in this morning. With most pubs and restaurants across the UK closed since the 20th of March, the hospitality sector has been really deeply hit by the pandemic. But it's nice to even see the inside of a pub. <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> <laughs> I like pubs. Uh, 25 past seven. If you're one of the many homeschooling parents, good morning to you, um, and in your, you're in need of a little extra inspiration, we have got help. Uh, famous names uh, like Gary Lineker, Tim Peake have opened up their homes and actually become celebrity supply teachers for a new CBBC series. Today's episode comes from the BBC's religion editor, Martin Bashir. Let's have a look. As uh, Martin said there, celebrity supply teacher, uh, weekdays, CBBC, and Martin's lesson is today, 9.25, and you can also find it on the iPlay. And lots of other um, brilliant lessons as mm. well. Um, Carol can catch us all up with what's going on with the weather this morning. Morning. Thanks very much, Carol. At 7.35, you're watching Breakfast with Dan Walker and Louise Minchin.
Uh, plans to get all primary school children in England back into the classroom before the end of the summer term could be abandoned. Today mm. on, you know, what is the plan for primary schools, particularly in England as well? Yes, and you'll be able to uh, follow that on BBC News. And as Louise said during that interview, I'm sure that's something we'll be covering again on tomorrow's programme. And thank you. I know, you. So, you know, so many people, yeah. people watching, everybody watching at home, people watching at home, you know, very concerned yeah. about what is going to happen which we are finding out via emails and all the messages you're sending Thank through you. to the programme today. Um, we're also talking about sport this morning with Sally, who's got a bit of cricket for us, Sal. Good morning. Yeah, um, a little bit... To look forward to tomorrow, Sal. See you then. <laughs> we're talking about um, holidays, but it's actually holidays that have been cancelled. Um, anyone who's had their trip cancelled, apparently, by the company Vacation Rentals is now entitled to a full refund after the consumer watchdog stepped in. I'm um, Sean, so... Now, if you've looked up at the sky recently, you may have noticed some stunning cloud formations and skylines. <laughs> have you, Louise? Yes, I, actually quite a lot. Um, as we take more notice of the natural world around us, the Cloud Appreciation Society, yes, there is one, uh, say they've seen a boost in membership since lockdown started. Uh, the founder of that society, being on Cloud9, comes from. Isn't that lovely? Cloud we, number nine. She's not got numbers. her head in the clouds. She does look at them, though, doesn't she? <laughs> Carol, hello. Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Louise Minchin and Dan Walker this morning. Let's get you up to date on the headlines coming up to um, 8 o'clock. No to you all, uh, Tuesday the 9th of June, the plan for all primary pupils in England to go back to school before the end of term is to be dropped by the government. The Education Secretary, Gavin Williamson, is expected to confirm that decision to MPs later today. Our education correspondent... And thank you as well for all your comments on that. Yeah. Boris Johnson has said he understands the depth of emotion felt by anti-racism protesters in the UK following the death of George Floyd. In a video message for the newspaper The Voice, he warned that attacks on police or property would not be tolerated. Our political... Prince Andrew's lawyers have rejected claims by US prosecutors that he has not cooperated with the inquiry into convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein in the next half an hour or so. A private funeral service will be held today for George Floyd, the man whose killing by police officers in the US sparked anti-racism protests right around... Very striking, indeed. Mm. Um, eight minutes past eight. Now, when the statue of slave trader Edward Colston was toppled by anti-racism protesters in Bristol on Sunday, it raised questions about whether it's appropriate for cities to mark the lives of colonial leaders. From Glasgow to Liverpool, monuments, statutes and even streets bear the names of controversial figures from history. Tim Muffet has more. That also about sort of education as mm. well. We're joined now by Lavinia Stennett, who's campaigning for black history to be made a compulsory part of the school curriculum in England, and also teacher Camille London Mayo from the National Education Union. Union. Uh, morning, both. Thank you morning. so much for joining us. Camille, I want to talk to you first of all. You've been a teacher for some 30 years or so. Um, what do you think? What would you like to see changed in, in, in teaching? Um, I'd like to stress this. What is it that you'd like to see taught and what needs to change? Morning. Our current what examples would you like to see, Lavinia? I think there are plenty of examples. Yeah, as we saw in the, the, in the piece there from Tim Muffet, I think in, in the wake of what we saw in Bristol with the Edward Colston statue, there's a really interesting debate going on about statues of people like Cecil Rhodes and, and Nelson. It was taught. How much difference would it make to, you know, children um, growing up in right now? It would make a massive difference. We know... Given what you saw with Edward Coulson, and many people, or some people have said that they didn't know, for example, who he was by that. Oh, yes, definitely. I think this time... Um... Both of you. On, on the point of uh, his context, Lavinia, first of all. I think... Um, I think that it's really important that we... This morning, Thank uh, you. really good to talk to you. Camille london -Mai, who's been a teacher for 30 years, and to Lavinia Stennett as well, who's CEO of The Black Curriculum. Good to speak to you on breakfast. Thank you. Thanks, both. Um, 20 past eight, uh, lawyers for Prince Andrew have rejected claims by US prosecutors that he has not cooperated with the inquiry into sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. Legal representatives for the Duke say he has offered to speak with them on at least three occasions this year. We sp spoke to Gloria Allred, the lawyer representing some of Epstein's accusers this morning, and she told us she wants a resolution for alleged victims. It's uh, 25 minutes past eight. Good morning. Uh, you're watching Breakfast from the BBC. Let's find out what's happening with the weather. Thank you much for being with us throughout the morning. <laughs> oh, you are watching Breakfast with Dan and Louise. Let's get you up to date on the latest news and plans to get all primary school children in England back to, to the classroom before the end of the summer term are to be abandoned. The government... 
You're right up to date with the latest news. Now, from medical staff to cleaners and porters, behind every survivor of coronavirus is a team of people who've helped them back to their full health. Breakfast Graham Satchel has the story of one mum who says she owes everything to those who cared for her. Lovely well done, though, Karen, yeah. and well, well done all of them as well, because um, you just get a sense of how emotionally involved they are as well, not yeah. just caring for and making people better, but as well, their emotions are there too. And thank you to Graham for bringing everybody together on a, yeah. on a screen um, to sort of show, you, show their appreciation. As, as you said, everyone is invested in making sure they get as many people as possible through the other side. Mm. It's um, 8.38. With most pubs and restaurants across the UK closed since March the 20th, the hospitality sector has, of course, been deeply hit by the coronavirus pandemic. Thank you. <laughs> I was joined now by a Jack Stone programme. I'm sure, I don't know whether you could hear everything that was being said there, but on that issue of sort of trying to stay open and um, trying to, so when, when you do reopen, trying to get things right, trying to make... How difficult has it been uh, to try and get those things in place for you? Idea. So, for example, if the two-metre rule stays in place, which is the numbers that you can have in that in your restaurants... You're right. Um, just, just also, I mean, anybody who's looked at, at most restaurant or pub kitchens, you know, they are small spaces. So it's not just about people getting into the restaurants, is it? It's about keeping your staff safe, presumably, as well. Um, and you've got some, the take though at the moment, isn't it? At least some people get fish and chips. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's good. He is actually in lockdown in Sydney. And again, we... Before we let you go, right, the next thing we're going to do is, is look at um, somebody making a cup of tea in an unconventional way. So, you know, you say you've not cooked anything for a long time, Jack, but... You've got to make just tea. Just talk us through the perfect cup of tea. Great to talk to you. Thank you very much. And best of luck when you do get to open as well. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Jack was referring to there, a video we're about to show you, all about the best way to make a cup of tea. It's a topic that divides families, individuals, all sorts of people have a view. Uh, this is a video from an American mother and her daughter, which I think it's fair to say has sent shut through quite a few Brits on social media. I think Louise turned it off when the microwave got As involved. soon as they went to the microwave, <laughs> I'm like, I'm out. Anyway, have a look. It's mm. going to stop you there. That's not tea. <laughs> Do feel free to send in your comments about that. I mean, I don't, I'm not even going to start. Well, I am, did, with the microwave. Did you just turn it off at the uh, microwave? Literally, well, as soon as the microwave, I'm like, I'm like, I can't even be watching that. Okay. Um, anyway. Each to their own, of course, but not that way. <laughs> 8.51. Uh, seeing lions and meerkats in the wild would normally mean travelling to the other side of the world, but how about doing it from the comfort of your own home? Uh, while lockdown has mostly put a stop to travelling, virtual tourism has seen a big boost. Our Africa correspondent Andrew Harding has this report. The term urban is often used to describe music of black origin, but it's long been criticised for being outdated. And now one of the world's largest record labels, Republic Records, have said they are no longer using the term and wants others to do the same. Let's speak to what it mean and what it now means. What does it sort of represent to you? Um, you know what? Across their whole organisation, people won't work, you know, that department won't be named like that and all the rest of it. You'd like it to... It's important that, it's, you know, we're talking about education earlier on, we're talking about statutes earlier on, and it seems that there are sort of lots of things that we have been examined in the current climate. Is that a, a positive thing for you? I'm intrigued by what I'm assuming is some sort of dad bag on the front. Thank you so much. I think I need one of those front bags myself. Uh, that's it from us. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow. Have a really good day. Bye-bye. See you then.